Welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Let's take you back in history and uh, share with you some things that happened on this day, 20th of April, many years ago. I'm going back not too far away, 2018, and it's all about the Commonwealth of Nations. On this day, Prince Charles was nominated to uh, succeed the current well, Queen Elizabeth as um, uh, the head of the Commonwealth of Nations. It was on this day that um, he was nominated to replace uh, Queen Elizabeth as uh, the head of the commonwealth there had been calls for or, uh, for the role to be rotated among the 53 nations that make up the commonwealth but you know eventually that wasn't uh, done you know with regards to uh, prince charles this had been going on since 1931 of course the commonwealth started in 1931 and it is a, a a combination of all the nations that were former british colonies and eventually became friends of the British Empire and nations that decided to, you know, work together for one common good for economic um, sustainability and for growth and all of that. And so it has been going on since 1931. Uh, the Queen, I, th I think Queen Elizabeth eventually was made head of the Commonwealth in 1952 when she became head of the British Empire and Queen. Um, and so in 2018, you know, after, you know, she had been there for decades, uh, they decided that instead of rotating it among member states, it was going to be Prince Charles that would be taking over. She was um, uh, 91 at that time. Prince Charles was 69 at that time. Um, it should be about you know early 70s now, I believe. My maths is not so good this morning, <laughs> off the top of my head. But it was on this day that he was nominated to succeed Queen Elizabeth as the head of the Commonwealth. Fantastic. Let's uh, go on today in history as well. Just uh, at 2012 here, April 12th, 20th, 2012, it was a very sad incident that shook the world. It was a Borgia Air Flight 213. You know, there was a plane crash near Islamabad in Pakistan. It killed 127 people. Now, that Borgia Air Flight uh, 213, it was a domestic scheduled passenger flight operated by the Pakistani airline Borgia Air. And uh, it was, uh, you know, traveling from Karachi to Islamabad. And uh, on this day in history, it crashed, you know, while it was on that route due to bad weather as it approached, you know, final landing. Airline operators say this possibly was caused by a lightning. I mean, when we saw, you know, animations of this crash, it was so graphic because we saw the airline descending, attempting to land, and, you know, something like lightning just came out and struck the airline. And we saw, you know, debris flying all, all over the place, body parts scattered miles away, you know, from the scene. It was just such a gory sight. Family members who had gone to the airport to wait for their loved ones, you know, broke down in tears. Some people lost two daughters. People lost loved ones. And it was just such a very sad, sad thing. And it was the airline's first evening flight. In almost 12 years, that flight occurred. You know, actually took off at around 5 p.m. And we saw this crash about one, one hour, 30 minutes later at around 6.30 p.m. on that day of April uh, 20th, 2012. Uh, on, on April 30th, the Borja Air announced a compensation of 500,000 you know, rupees to the legal heirs of the victims of Flight 213. Borja's air license was revoked by the CAA because it had failed to you know, comply with requirement of the Pakistan civil aviation and you know investigations were open into this crash and uh, the the owner of the Borja Air Mr. Borja was uh, denied you know exit from Pakistan you know until investigations were conducted it's just such a very sad day in history when the Borja Air Flight 213 crashed killing all 121 passengers on board and six crew members so two things uh, from the story first of all is the the part where Yes, they say that air travel is the safest mm -hmm. um, a means of uh, transportation, um, but it hasn't in any way, those facts haven't in any way reduced my fear of uh, <laughs> flying. You know, I still have that fear till tomorrow. Um, and then the second one is, you know, you just mentioned the owner of the airline, you know, was banned from leaving Pakistan until mm -hmm. um, investigations were done and, and, and whatnot. Um, I always like to refer to how we do things here in Nigeria because the reason uh, we have you know, these conversations and sometimes we talk about things that have happened in the history is because we hope that we can learn as a country. Sure. Uh, many times we've had um, you know, failures of uh, companies, um, we've had failures in you know, our system, 
um, because of the lapses, you know, from particular persons, maybe because of management, uh, maybe because of staff, maybe because of um, corruption. Uh, but we barely have a system that um, Checks holds people those accountable. Things. Yes, indeed. Um, if you remember, also, there's been times here, decades ago, many, many years ago, where there was an airline that you know caught fire, you know, just after landing, and uh, led to the death of dozens of school children. Uh, till date, you know, I don't remember anybody being, you know, held accountable for uh, lack of fire equipment or lack of, you know, uh, proper um, uh, facilities that would have saved those lives. We've had also the one that crashed into a building in uh, Iju, or I can't remember where, where that was in Lagos here. Yeah. Still no answers, still no questions, still nobody who was held accountable. Um, and it's something that I feel bad about, you know, for, you know, us here in Nigeria. Whenever disaster strikes, who is held accountable? Who, you know, who should have taken responsibility for the failure yeah. of the system that should have protected those lives and property? And it happens in every sector of our, you know, our country, in healthcare, in security, in education, every single direction. Nobody is held accountable. Unfortunately, we instead see a, um, a situation where we almost reward failure. You know, you reward, you know, negative, you know, um, behavior um, instead. And that's something that I believe should change. Yes, we need to change that. Uh, today in history, the sad one in 2012. And you went and back. of course, uh, 2018. And also, yeah, the Commonwealth of Nations, you know, um, nations that were colonized by the British, that were, you know, under British colony for a long time. Nigeria eventually uh, joined uh, the Commonwealth, I think, in, in 1960. South Africa pulled out and then joined back after Appetite in 1994. Mm -hmm. Um, but, you know, for me, I'm also, you know, sensing that a lot of these nations are, con are nations that the British Empire has still had a lot of control over them. So, yes, you know, you gained independence from the uh, British, but there's still a lot of influence that the British has had on many of these the nations. neo-colonialism. Many, many, yes. many years after they, you know, gained independence. Nothing much has changed. The only thing that is different is that, you know, you don't see it. Even know. though we can argue that these African countries have what it takes to free themselves Absolutely. from the shackles of neocolonialism. Absolutely. You, know, you we still have, we had have, a conversation. have them get aid and, you know, sort of tune of billions and billions of naira. In the news, there's a story about um, uh, an investigation into the Rwandan genocide and the role that France uh, played. Yes. Even though um, France was, you know, cleared from... Yes. You know, all the investigations and indictment. But I've, I've also seen, you know, other reports that have shown that they kind of, you know, played some role in it. You know, it's not something that is spoken about, you know, um, a lot. You know, and these are just private investigations. These are just reports uh, that have been carried out. what's weird is the investigation was carried out in France by French people. So when they were presenting the reports to the president, I was like, did you think I was going to implicate right. myself? We need to go. <laughs> we'll be back after the short break. And of course, we're going into our first major conversation for today. It's all about the Minister of um, uh, Communications and Digital Economy, Issa Pantami. Should he resign or is he, you know, okay that he holds that position as minister even further? We're going to be speaking with the executive director of Muslim Rights Concern, Mirik, uh, Professor Ishaka Kintola, and the lawyer, Inibehe F. Young, will both be joining us. Yes, well. and a uh, big question to you. Have you voted? Our poll is up at Plus TV Africa. Let's know what you think about this. Should Pantemi resign or not? Or are you undecided? At Plus TV Africa. We'll be right back.